Hi hey everyone, we're at NEDS 2023 in Rotterdam, the Netherlands. And now I'm going to focus on the Saab and Diamond large booth, starting with their new submarine model. Gentlemen, good morning, great to see you again. Good morning, Xavier, welcome to the Netherlands. So you're showcasing for the very first time this uh, new scale model of a new submarine known as the C-71. Frederick, what is it exactly, the C-71? Yes, we are very proud for the first time to present a model of our expeditionary submarine. So it, it is a C-71, as you said, and this is an example of all the generic systems we can include and take the opportunity to show our flexibility and modularity when we design our submarines, which is a very good way to adapt to customer-specific requirements, but also then take the opportunity to involve local industry by using this modularity and listen to the customer requirements. So it is based off the Blakinger class, uh, it's uh, slightly bigger. Is this your proposal for the Dutch uh, Walrus class replacement program? So this is a 3000 ton uh, plus uh, submarine, uh, so a bigger than A26. A lot of the systems are uh, based on the A26 systems. And yes, as I said, this is a generic version of what we offer to navies today that require this expeditionary capability. Richard, what is the role of uh, Damon in the C-71? Yes, I think the role of Damon is, as already, as of day one, to be a full partner of Saab. And I think now these new times, who call for new action, give us the benefit of this early relation. Saab and Damon are both the national champions when it comes to naval shipbuilding in their respective nations. And the nations have already a lot of base cooperation for many years and it was actually a good fit and we are actually really cooperating. So it means that we are in the management teams, in the research teams, in the engineering teams as of day one. We are enlarging our footprint and I think one of the most important things that comes now is that we have a, a good stepping stone for our team to the Dutch supply chain who will be joining us on this program. So the cooperation is not only regarding the Netherlands requirement, but potential future export market. Yes, I think it's fair to say that in the model that we both operate, Saab and Damen, we always focus on launching customer projects, which offer us as a uh, private company to go to the market to find export partners, whilst also keeping on board our local supply chain. And we foresee real export opportunities since this both, which is compliant to a very demanding customer like the Netherlands Navy, will also be attractive for partners in NATO or EU, for example. Frederick, from a Saab point of view, what's uh, the benefit of that cooperation with Diamond? No, uh, looking at the Saab DNA, how we work historically, I can take a number of examples like the grip and fights with Embraer in Brazil, or our combat management system with Saab in Australia and ASC in Australia, the whole Collins program. We have a number of those examples where we always try to find local partners where we together can develop and adapt and listen to the customers, being very receptive to customer requirements. And we know most customers want to establish these, the different capabilities in their countries. And we believe that the best way of doing that is establish local partnerships. Very well, gentlemen, thank you very much. Thank you so much. We're now taking a close look at the many new ship model designs uh, that Damon is unveiling at the, at the show this year. With me is uh, Bob Desmet, he's now tender manager at Damon, but his background is naval architecture and uh, he worked on uh, most of these designs. Bob, good to see you again. Yes, very nice to see you again, Xavier. So we're now standing uh, near the anti-submarine warfare frigate uh, project for uh, the Netherlands and Belgium. Uh, what can you tell us about the current status of this program? The contract for the engineering and building of these four ships has been signed in uh, June of this year, so just uh, at the beginning of summer. That means we are now uh, in the full stage of engineering. The design was made by Comet, so our Ministry of Defense. We joined uh, forces with them like two or three years ago to get into the details of the design, combine the contract package and that was signed in June. So now we are really diving into the details and preparing the design to be actually built. And uh, the projection now is that the building will start the, in the beginning of 2025. Can you briefly give us some of the design features of that uh, vessel? Yes, of course. So it's obviously an anti-submarine warfare frigate, so the focus is on anti-submarine warfare. 
which means that from our perspective as integrators of the platform, especially the underwater radiated noise was an incredibly important feature. So together with the experts of Comet, we made a design which is really excellent on that part. Actually, the propeller design is made by Comet. It's uh, uh, really state of the art to reduce underwater radiated noise, but also all the sources inside of the platform have been designed to be as silent as possible and to make sure that it's really uh, very low detectability uh, from submarines and on the other hand, of course, very capable of detecting uh, enemy submarines. The sensor suite it has underwater is also very powerful with a, 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 a towed ray sonar, or actually the, the LFAPS as we call it, uh, and the hull mounted sonar in the front. Uh, but I think it's also important to highlight that apart from the anti-submarine warfare um, uh, specialty, it also has a very strong uh, anti-air warfare suite, as you can see with a very, uh, very impressive sensor suite and weapons that will make it very capable of defending itself also from air threats. The AWWS by Thales, I believe that's the name. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So Thales also has been closely involved. In this case, Thales, uh, by the way, is a contracting party, party from the, the Ministry of Defense themselves. But obviously we have worked a lot together, uh, especially where our fields of, uh, of, 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 let's say, our fields in the project touch each other. For example, in the mast, where a lot of their sensors will be integrated uh, into the structure that we provide. Lastly, Bob, uh, how big is the ship, uh, lengthwise and displacement-wise? So displacement-wise, it's six and a half thousand tons, uh, more or less, and it's a bit over 140 meters in length. So, uh, well, I, th I think it's a, a platform that is, uh, for the capability that it carries, it's quite compact, but nonetheless, it is a, a very powerful and impressive uh, platform size-wise as well. We're now standing next to a scale model of the German F-126 frigate. Uh, it's actually a very large ship. Uh, in my book, that would be called a destroyer, but uh, the Germans call it a frigate. Uh, Bob, uh, Damon is in charge of uh, the design of this ship. Yes, exactly. Uh, we designed the ship for the, the BMW, so the, the German Ministry of Defense. Uh, we are now engineering it, and we're actually up to the stage that very soon we will start the production together with our German uh, shipyard partners. Uh, so yeah, that's very exciting to see how it's progressing. What will be the role of that vessel? This really is a, a multi-role ship with a lot of modular functionality. Um, so it, it has, for example, uh, anti-submarine warfare modules that it can plug in, but it also has special, special forces modules that it can also uh, take along. Because of the big size of the vessel, there is also quite some room for these modules and this modular space. Uh, in terms of uh, specifications, uh, same thing, how was the length and the displacement? So this one is indeed a very large pl uh, platform. It's over 160 meters, uh, almost 170 even. Uh, the displacement is over 10,000 tons. So compared to the, 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 let's say, the Dutch counterpart, this is a m much larger ship. Last question, Bob. Uh, when is this vessel, uh, the first in class, supposed to be launched and delivered to the customer? The first one will be launched in 2028, and delivery should be like more or less one year later. Bob, you're also showing an updated uh, design of your Enforcer uh, series of uh, amphibious vessels uh, and uh, LPDs. Uh, is this for the upcoming uh, UK uh, Dutch requirement? That is exactly why we are showing it. Um, of course, the requirements there, they are still in full development uh, in the partnership between the UK and the uh, Dutch government. Um, so we'll have to see where exactly that end, ends up to, uh, to, to go towards. But in any case, the feeling that we have is that what we have developed from the LPDs that the Royal Netherlands Navy has right now, which is the Rotterdam and Johan de Witt, so we developed the Enforcer series and um, uh, with an update there that we have been working on for the last few years to modernize it a bit further and to tailor it more to the challenges that we see and we predict right now for the Dutch and the British uh, platforms. Uh, we believe it can be a very uh, interesting solution, especially since we have developed it as a series uh, with uh, design modularity as we, we kind of usually do with our um, designs. So it could be an ideal solution for uh, any, let's say, variations that might occur between the requirements of the British and the Netherlands uh, navies. Last but not least, uh, Bob, uh, this is your latest, most recent project. Uh, this is uh, for the Portuguese Navy. It's a hybrid uh, LHD model ship for uncrewed systems. 
Yes, exactly. So a mothership for, as, as we see a lot of uh, uh, development in the drone capability uh, area. So this is a mothership that has been uh, developed for the Portuguese Navy, for which last week we received the contract to actually uh, go and build it. Um, and it's really a, a multi-role ship with uh, a lot of space, obviously, for uh, all kinds of missions, but especially focused, of course, uh, on the very large uh, flight deck that it has from which it can deploy a variety of uh, aerial systems. So what, what will be the missions of this uh, vessel? Is it an experimental vessel? Yes, it really needs to be multi-role, so it needs to be able to tackle a lot of functionalities and a lot of uh, uh, operations. So there is a lot of space to do flexible things, but there is also quite some equipment that will help it do that. For example, also in the underwater domain, because actually in the underwater sensors, it is also very, very capable, especially for a, a platform like this. Bob, thank you so much for uh, introduce, uh, introducing your latest uh, diamond designs to, to Naval News. Thank you. You're very welcome. Very nice to see you again.